is the final session before we move on to the Ekathon Innovation Challenge. It's going to be in partnership with the IRENA on the topic education and skill building for the energy trans uh, transition. So taking part in this session is Samah Sayed, Program Officer, Renewable Energy Educational Skills, IRENA, moderated by Latif Al-Mansouri, a student leaders program at IRENA, and also a previous FSL member. Hello, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening, good afternoon. It's the end of the day. I know we're all tired. But uh, we gather here today to highlight the steps we need to take as youth in the road of sustainability and climate resilience. In 2021, the UAE launched its net zero plan for 2050, which means we have exactly 28 years to act. So today's session is in partnership with IRENA, the International Renewable Energy Agency. For those who are not familiar, IRENA is an intergovernmental organization that supports countries in their transition to a sustainable energy future. As it was emphasized in the recent IRENA 12th Assembly, it is expected that the investment in renewable energy will peak over the next decade, and we should accelerate that transition. Two years ago, I was sitting here in this auditorium starting my journey as an FSL member with Masdar. And today, I'm here in partnership with IRENA as a member of their student leader program. My name is Latif Al-Mansouri, and I'll be moderating uh, the session. Let's welcome uh, Samah Sayed from IRENA so we can start our discussion. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Latifa. And thank you to Mazda Youth for Sustainability for inviting Irina to be part of this um, very exciting program today, but more broadly to be involved in some of the work and the activities um, that you're doing. I mean, it's fantastic to see such a, such a focus on youth engagement here in the UAE, um, and this is something that Irina is also um, very passionate about as well, so it's great to be here. Yes, so we can start off by the first question. Uh, so we often hear the term energy transition. So can you briefly explain what that means? Sure, um, so this is, as you said, a term that we hear quite often. I'm sure most of you are quite familiar with what it means, but quite simply, um, when we talk about the energy transition, we're talking about a pathway for transforming our energy sector. So from one that is fossil-based to one that is um, carbon neutral. And so over the years, we're seeing more and more examples of countries set these net zero targets for their greenhouse gas emissions. And so, of course, this includes the, the UAE that has set quite an ambitious target for 2050. But this is also happening globally. So more and more governments, countries, um, cities even, and companies are setting these net zero targets. And so this means that the world of tomorrow is going to look very, very different to the world that we're living in today. And so we need to start preparing young people to start working in a different world. Um, the skills of yesterday are not going to be the skills that we need for tomorrow. Yeah, we need to guide them to the future and change their perspective exactly. for that. So what are also the implications of the energy trans transmission for the world of work? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think there are quite a few. I think the first thing to keep in mind is... When we talk about the energy transition, it's not something that is far away. It's something that is already happening. 
Um, so maybe just a question for everyone here. In 2020, um, how much of new power additions do you think were from renewable energy? I don't know if anyone wants to take a guess. 50%? Anyone else has a... 40%? 40%? No, so actually it was much higher. In 2020, 82% of new power capacity was renewable. So that means only 18% of the power capacity was from fossil fuels or nuclear. So already there's a, a big revolutionary change that is happening. Um, and so when we talk about an energy transition and en a transformation of our energy system, it's something that is, um, that is not far off at all. And so when we talk about jobs and what does this mean for the world of work, um, it means that we're already seeing lots of new jobs being created and we're seeing a greening of many existing jobs and occupations. So some of the skills that you needed before have now changed to become greener. Um, and this is reflected in the growth of renewable energy jobs. So in 2020, there were 12 million people globally who are working in the renewable energy sector. Um, if we put in place some of the policies that we need to transform our energy system to have a 1.5 degree um, pathway that is compliant with the Paris Agreement, then we could create as many as 122 million jobs by 2050. So this includes 43 million jobs in renewable energy, but then also many jobs in energy efficiency, in grid flexibility. Um, and these are just for direct jobs in the energy sector. We're also going to see many indirect jobs and new industries that are being created as well. It is as uh, how it was mentioned that the transition to renewable energy will feed the economy and will create new job opportunities exactly. for that. Exactly. So uh, what are the roles that the education and skilling play in energy transition? What is the importance of that? Yeah, so I mean, I think that it's very important. I think especially because we have young people here in the room, some of the things to keep in mind is that no matter what your strengths are, no matter what your skills are, there is a way that you can use these skills for the betterment of our planet and for the future of our world. And so, if, you know, for the young people who are maybe more technically minded, the engineers, the scientists, um, you know, there are many career options where you can apply these skills. But there are also many other pathways as well. So we need the innovators and the entrepreneurs who will come up with new creative solutions um, for facing the, for solving the problems that we're facing. You know, we just heard about artists and architects and design as well, and this is also a very important skill. So for the more creative people, there's also a, a way that you can apply your skills. We need the policy makers, we need the advocates, we need the teachers who will be teaching the next generation. We need the communicators. And so when we talk about education and skilling for energy transition, really there's, um, you know, two main objectives that we're talking about. So on the one side, we want to build this transition workforce that I was talking about. But on the other side, we also just need to make sure that everyone in the public um, has at least a baseline of sustainable energy knowledge, right? Because we need the people who are empowered to make conscious decisions. So whether we're talking about voters or consumers um, or even informed business managers who make good choices for their companies, it's, it, everyone needs at least some level and so when we talk about the education and skilling, it's both of these sides. It's the more technical skills for the people who are working in the sector, but then we also need basic public education on renewable energy as well. So we need it to be integrated into education systems, within schooling. Um, so this is also equally important. And it's also important that we have the formal and the non-formal education. So it's great to also have spaces like this where we're building some of these non-formal um, skills as well, some of the soft skills and um, the, the broader um, context as well. Uh, another worry is that uh, it's about the gender disparities, especially mm -hmm. in the STEM major issues. And this is faced by so many countries. So do you see any difference in the number of men and women in renewable energy? Yes, um, unfortunately there is a, a big gender disparity. So Irina over the years has done a number of surveys that look at women in the renewable energy sector. We've collected data on this. And we found that women only make 32% of the renewable energy sector. And so, I mean, yes, this number is higher than the 22% share that we usually find in the oil and gas sector, but we still have quite a long way to go to achieving gender parity and making sure that women are equally represented. Um, we did a survey recently that looked specifically at the wind sector, and there the number was even lower. So only 21% of um, workers in the wind sector are women. 
So there is a lot that needs to be done. Um, and we found one of the things was that women, even when they are in the renewable energy sector, they hold more of the administrative roles. So when it comes to the STEM roles, it's only 28% um, held by women. And I think this also is reflective of a, a problem in STEM more broadly. Um, you know, there was a study that I read about a while ago, and it's called a, a draw a scientist study. So they ask children to draw, you know, who they think a scientist is, or what does a scientist look like. And most of the children drew a man. And so I think there's a lot that needs to be done quite early to change these perceptions. If we work, if we focus only on kind of workplace accommodations and changes in the workplace, it's already too late. Um, so we need to start early to make sure that especially young girls are aware of the different opportunities and how they can apply their skills and, and the important role that they have to play in the sector. And I mean, it's great to be here in the UAE because I think the UAE is one of the countries that has done a, you know, a really good job of overcoming some of these gender disparities. You know, I've been involved in a lot of events and you see that women are very well represented. And so I think there's a lot that can be learned from the UAE that could be passed on to other countries. Um, so to hear more about how the UAE has overcome this, this problem of women in STEM and some of these gender disparities and to share these lessons more broadly. Yeah, especially like uh, showing women more. For example, yeah. we have the Wiser program for yeah. Mustar. It's like a huge support yeah. for women in exactly. STEM and technology. Yeah, I agree. So I think mentorship programs, scholarship opportunities, all of these are also very important. So things that specifically target women and and give them um, other women to lean on and to learn from and to share with as well. So, yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, also, I understand that the Ministry of Education and IRENA are collaborating to develop a new, a new renewable energy curriculum, especially for schools yeah. in the UAE. So what do you hope to achieve and what makes this initiative so important? Yeah. So actually, this is a, a really exciting new project that we're working on. So IRENA is working in partnership with the UAE Ministry of Education on Renewable Energy Curriculum. And already you've seen you know, the UAE Ministry of Education has been very forward-looking in creating this culture of sustainability within their public education system. And so IRENA has been working with the MOE now to build and expand on some of these existing efforts and to develop a new renewable energy curriculum for use in schools um, across the UAE. And I think one of the most innovative aspects of this initiative is that it's cross-curricular. So we're not just focusing on the science subjects, but it's about making sure that renewable energy is embedded across all subject areas. So for the social sciences, for the mathematics. So we want the students to have the technical skills, but we also want them to understand the context. You know, why is this important? Why are we talking about renewable energy? What are some of the implications of this? Um, and you know, what does this mean for the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development? What does this mean for net zero strategies of the UAE um, and globally? So we want them to also have that contextual knowledge and understanding in addition to the technical skills. And so, as you know, IRENA, we're an international organization. So this is a pilot project. This is the first time we're doing something like this. Um, and so we're very proud to work with the UAE on this. And the idea is that once we have developed these materials, we can share them with other countries because many other countries also want to start going down these pathway and improving their education system to make sure that it's fit for the future. Um, and so we'll be sharing these materials as IRENA with other countries as well. So it's yes. an exciting project. Yeah, maybe you can share with us, share with us more of IRENA's effort to engage youth and sure. uh, for skill building. Yeah, so we have a number of different programs already. As you heard, yes. Latifa, she's a graduate of our IRENA Student Leaders Program. So this is a three-month virtual training that we have um, where you hear lectures from different IRENA experts and staff. You work on group activities and projects related to renewable energy. Um, there's lots of coursework involved as well, so you get to meet students from all over the world. Um, so we have two cohorts a year. Each cohort has approximately 100 students from many different countries. So I think the last one had That's 80 very countries. very inclusive, yeah. Yeah, 80 countries represented. So you get to interact with students from all over. Um, the next round of applications will be opening next month, actually. Um, so I do encourage you all to apply and um, if you have any questions about this program, you can email growth at irena.org um, and I can share also the contact with you afterwards. Yes, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. Don't miss it. Thank you. Thank you yes. for promoting it as well. Yeah. And we get to meet some fantastic young people as well. Um, and we have a few other programs. We have an Irena Youth Forum 
And so this is a way to have young people engage with the IRENA membership, so with the energy ministries from all over the world. And so we just held our youth forum last week, actually, on the sidelines of the IRENA assembly. Um, but even throughout the year, we have many youth talks. So these are webinars and opportunities where we have young people present on what they're working on, um, share their concerns and their priorities for the energy transition. Um, so this again is advertised on the IRENA website and I encourage you to take a look. Um, we're also now forming a new initiative. So I don't know if you're aware, but the UAE has formed something called the Global Councils on um, Sustainable Development Goals. And so IRENA is leading the Global Council on SDG 7. And so we decided to use this opportunity to really center youth in the discussion. So our Global Council is focusing on enabling youth action for SDG 7. Um, and so we have youth representatives from around the world, um, as well as senior leaders, um, people from different organizations who are working on energy. And so the idea is to bring all of these people together to really form some, some concrete programs for youth globally um, on sustainable development goals and on SDG 7 in particular. Yeah, that's very important. So do you have any closing messages? Yep. Well, first of all, thank you for being patient with us. I know it's, it's a long day and we're the last one. So um, thank you for listening and for being here. And I think I just want to re-emphasize this idea that you know, the world is becoming greener. It's becoming more sustainable. And so as young people who are starting your careers, you need to make sure that the skills that you're building are the skills that we need for the future, the skills we need for tomorrow, and not the skills that are needed for the past. Um, so I look forward to hearing more about what you're doing in the future and the, the impacts that you're making on the world. Thank you. Make sure to stay curious until you reach places. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Lakifa.